Where is holiness in this physical world? Where is Shrina, divine presence of God? God is everywhere, concealed. Where is he revealed? That is the Shrina, the divine presence of God. Where is that in this world? We understand in the spiritual realm, the world of Bria, the world of Yitzira, the world of Asiya, and the world of Bria, the holy of the, the the holiness there is in the divine intelligence which comes forth from there the talmud the gemara the world leads here the world formation is divine, predominantly a world of of emotion divine emotion and there comes the adjudication of jewish law as in the mishnah and the world of asiya comes the actual to- torah scroll and it's right written form and the holiness extends even into the way it's written that has to be written in a precise way because holiness extends even into the precision of how it's written but that's all the way it evolves from the spiritual realm right where's the holiness now well in this world at least so during the first holy temple that stood for 410 years in jerusalem it was in the ark and the tablets that were housed in the ark which is in the holy of holies just like in the holy of holies in each spiritual world was where the shrine the divine presence dwelled so likewise, the divine presence, meaning the Shrina, right, which it's the Shrina, the divine presence of God, its name, if you will, is Malchus of Atsilus, Malchus royalty, sovereignty, divine sovereignty, in the world of Atsilus, which is a world of emanation, God is the emanator, right? as opposed to God, the way he's found within creation. This is, or or rather, not with, as God as acts as creator. Here is God as emanator. So, Malthus of Atsilus is revealed, that light, it reveals the light of the Ein Soif, of God himself. The limitless light of God. Which, of course, is intrinsically infinite transcends all worlds but yet it's revealed through malchus of atzilus that it then goes down into being and garbing itself the holy of holies in the world of bria and then through their malchus embeds in it of, of bria into the world of itzira as we have just explained right and as it comes down so the greater the world <laughs> The more intense is that light. So the Shrina is located in this physical world. How could it be found here? Right? Spiritual worlds is one thing, but in this world. So it's found in specifically the Ten Commandments. Again, that's housed in the Holy of Holies. And that's what makes it holy. The Ten Commandments. Now, well, what's about the Ten Commandments? Firstly, Ten Commandments is an all-embracing of the entire Torah. Now, some people say, well, I keep the Ten Commandments and that's it. Well, the truth is, if you keep the Ten Commandments, and that will bring you ultimately, as Reb Sajikon explains, that the Ten Commandments includes all 613 specific commandments they include it all which of course is supernal wisdom of god in the world of atzilus that is far higher than any kind of manifestation of the shrina that's possible but it comes down that lofty divinity into this physical world where in the stones of the Ten Commandments. 
engraved on material tablets of the stone. It is the supernal wisdom of God, which is the Torah. And it doesn't descend in the parallel way that everything else in this physical world descends. In this physical world, everything descends, as we've explained. Emanator, the world of Atsilus, Malchus, right? It's the source of all of creation. It manifests the Ein Soif, the limitlessness of God. Is Malchus of Atsilus. It comes down and vests itself into the world of Bria and creates everything in that world. Then and from there, it goes down into from Malchus. It's vest, Malchus of Bria vested in it is Malchus of Atsilus. Vested in it is the supreme wisdom of God. And what is that expression of? Ein Soif. So it's all, you know, it's like many layers of clothing. That it becomes less revealed, but inside of all of that is the infinite of God as it comes down. But once it comes into this world, there isn't a manifestation of God in this world, right? You take a physical thing, you don't see God manifest over here. Now, you might know that God is the creator of this and in your mind's eye that you know that God is animating this something from nothing every moment. But it's not manifest. It's not obvious. So much so that people can deny the presence of God in this world. But there is a place where it's undeniable. Where that presence is palpable and it's real. In the Holy Temple specifically in the Holy Temple, in the Holy of Holies, and specifically why in the Holy of Holies, by the way, parenthetically, that's why when the Kohen Gundel would go in there, the high priest would go in there on Yom Kippur. If he had an extraneous thought, you know what happened? He died on the spot. If he wasn't focused, and he went off on a daydream, he didn't last. Because it's such a powerful, holy experience the light of God is present there, that there can nothing be else but that. And it happened time and time, a year after year, that people were not on a sufficient, holy enough level that the coin God, well, the high priest actually died. And Altidab is not saying that over here. I'm just giving that as a an appreciation of what we're talking about over here. So what made these tablets specifically holy? Well, in the order of ascent, you usually come down to the world of Siyah Bria, uh, of, of, um, of Malchus of Asiya, then vests itself into Klippa, and Klippa gives rise to the material world. And it's Klippa, meaning a shell that covers over the holiness, and therefore we could deny God. It's possible. And not sense and experience the presence of God. However, in the material object of these stones that the Ten Commandments were written on, excuse me, which are called Maise Elokim, Michtav Elokim, the work of God, the writing of God, they were unnatural. Not like everything else in this world that is. Um, uh, limited to the nature that God has given things. Nature in Hebrew, Teva, means that it is immersed in such a way that it is, um, it hides the divinity, the spark of God that is in it, right? But not the case of the tablets, that didn't happen. They were on the level of supernal Chachma of Atzilus, and they were clothed into the, the Malchus of Bria. And from Malchus of Bria, it skipped Yitzira, Asiya, and went straight into the stone to reveal in there Shechina, divine presence of God. It was, an, it was a... Um, 
it was a um, what's the word I'm looking for direct connection to Malchus of Bria and therefore that's where arrested the the, the Shechina and because of that you know the engraving so I'm sorry I don't have uh, just thinking to make an example if you engrave on a still on a you know imagine this is the tablets right and it's engraved it goes through and through so the way you read it over here I'm the Lord your God who took you out of Egypt right if you turn it around and read it on this side what's it going to be the letters are going to be backwards it wasn't that way you read it on this side I'm the Lord your God who took you out of Egypt first commandment right on this side the exact same thing I'm the Lord your God who took you out of Egypt how could that be it's a miracle what how is it a miracle because it came as an expression of Malchus of Bria, direct, and therefore isn't bound by the laws of nature as everything else in this world is bound by the law of nature because it came from Malchus of Asiya into Klipa, for the most, for the most part at least, right? Or at least the material things in this world. And... Um, so it was miraculous. You had the letter Samach, which is like a circle, and it stood. You know, if you have a circle engraved, so a circle around it means there's not there was nothing holding it up. That's the holy temple, first holy temple, the Shechina, the divine presence of God. Now, that lasted for 410 years until it was destroyed in the 6th century of the Common Era, before the Common Era, sorry. Where was it during the second temple? Where is it today? Stay tuned. More to come. Okay, do we have any questions? John, did the tablets made from the supernal wisdom of God have mass weight in the world of Asiya? Yes. Absolutely. They were tablets. They were physical. So they had mass. They had weight. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, John. Joe, static dynamic. I'm not clear what you mean by that. Anybody else with a question? Listen, I, I, I'm sorry, Dana. You know, I'm bound. <laughs> I'm bound <laughs> by how the previous rib has set up the learning. So um, we're going to continue, though. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we've got some more questions here. Um, was the tablets made from blue stone? Sapphire. Yeah. God make, um,
Brett, God made sharp distinctions in Torah, yet there are degrees of holiness. Why? Not clear what you mean by that question. Yeah, but there are different degrees of holiness. So, so l let me explain now. Why did tablets only have two sides and not four or six? We learned about this at the end of Tanya a few months ago. If, so actually, um, Laurie, let's ask a, uh, a different question. I, why the miracle of doing something? I, what, what was the, is there a point there besides that it's an expression of the divine presence? So the fact when you engrave something, and this is the front, that means this is the back, front and back, which up and down, right and left, which is the nature of this world. What's the nature of this world? That there's plurality, there's more than one. What's the point of the Torah? is to um, do away with that sense of plurality. There's only the oneness of God. Hence, the basis of that oneness of God is in Torah. That's the teachings where you're going to get the oneness of God. Oneness of God doesn't not mean that there's only one God and not Zeus and not Yashke. It doesn't mean that. Oneness of God means is the only reality in, in the material world and in the, the spiritual world is God. It's the only reality, the only truth, the only real connection. And therefore, everything, as a result, everything in, in life is got a connection to God. Right? Is, a, 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 is connected to God and therefore everything we do we br bring some kind of connection to God we use it for a higher purpose to serve God but that notion of oneness is the Torah it's it's the divine wisdom therefore there's no back side there's only a front side this is the front and this is the front meaning it's an expression of the inner will of God not the outer will the outer will is a means to an end. I mean, there's a cause, there's an effect. There's a, there's a, a there's, there can be plurality. For plurality, it can be divisiveness even. That's where it comes from. There's me, there's you. And there's even a pen. The fact that there's no backside means there's no means to an end. There's only the front side. There's only the inner will of God, which is, there's only one truth, one reality, and that is the reality of God, a reality of the presence of God, the realness of God. And therefore, you know, it's not about me, it's about what God needs from me. And that's the only one side there is. Well, there isn't, oh, yeah, that's what God needs, but there's a backside too, you know, it's what, what I need too. Um, the highest level of unity is that the only need we have, <laughs> you think about it, the only real need we have is that we want to be needed. To be needy is a means to an end.
right? And therefore, I use you for my needs. But to be needed, in the end, is truly an end in itself. Why do you want to be needed? Just, uh, that's what I'm here for. That's what I was created for. So there's no backside. There's no external aspect, no exterior to the tablets. That's why it had to be, and that's an expression of Malchus of Bria, such a profound divinity. So there's only the two sides of it. It's you know that's the point. So the, the when necessary for anything more to express that. I hope that's clear. Okay, thank you, Lori, June, Brett. All right, beautiful. Jennifer, is there a connection with the sapphire tablets? Uh, so we use blue in Judaism. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, I don't know if the letter Samach is excluded from the Ten Commandments because it starts the word Sutton. Maybe. I'm not, I'm not certain. So the letters are carved from one side to the other, cut through the stone, exactly, through and through, exactly. Why were they written in sapphire? I don't know. Precious stone, I guess. Precious stone. Okay. Folks, as I mentioned, there will not be any class tonight. Tuesday night, hopefully. I'll confirm that, though. Hi, Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you for Chabad. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tani. Have an amazing, great day. And a good Chodesh to everybody.